John chapter 14, 15, 16, uh, there's lots of places you can go in Scripture to, to read about the Holy Spirit and read about the gift of the Holy Spirit. But I think in John chapter 14, 15, 16, this last discourse that Jesus is having with his disciples before the cross, his, his last real opportunity to communicate with them, you find some of the most clear teaching and explanation about who the Holy Spirit is because they don't know yet. They don't know what's coming and they don't know what's about to happen to Jesus. And so he's, he's trying to set them up to receive a gift that he has ready for them. And, and it starts uh, a little earlier in this, but we're gonna, we're gonna pick up in John 14, starting in verse 15, it says this. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, another helper. That's the first way he's kind of describing this is, is another helper other than, than himself. Even the spirit of truth, I want you to keep that in your mind, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So Jesus is, is it's talking about this unseen teacher. Um, you know, when you're watching a TV, and the, and the person is doing the interview, and suddenly he put his fingers on his ears, and they say, okay, we have a... a uh, break news now. And then you think, like, what is wrong with his finger? He's putting <laughs> a finger here. Is he in contact or something? No, he has, he has the point that it's talking and, 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 and this person is guiding him through what he has to do. It. And, I, I, and, I, and I believe that it's kind of like Jesus, as he, he was with them, if Jesus was still with us, he could not be in every place at once. He will have a, to have a good PA, like a person to make his schedule very well so he can be everywhere. But he say, but if I go and my father send the helper, he will be with you and he will be in you. He will be this person that will be reminding you and, and, and he will be reminding you and he will be the, is speaking, is speaking the truth. Remember Jesus, with the, when the disciples is go off the line, he will bring them back. He will say, it, 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 sometimes it was even hard when he looked at you, Peter and say, behind me, Satan. And then Peter was like, wait a minute. You know, and, and, so, and then Jesus, this is what Jesus is talking. It's, the Holy Spirit will come. And, and what I am, I did with you the whole time, he's going to be, doing this with each one of you in where you are. And, and he will be reminding you about the truth. So the, those, those two things that he mentions in the, in the first piece that we just read, is he's the spirit of truth and that he will not leave us as orphans. Uh, I, I think there's something in that. that the, the Holy Spirit does a lot of things. But today we want to look at those two pieces. Mm -hmm. The fact that he is the spirit of truth and, and he's this, this unseen teacher that is going to live inside of us. But also there's this piece about not being orphans or, or explaining to us the, the value of the, the father heart of God. It continues in John 14, verse 25, says, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. In other words, these are the things I've been saying, the spirit of truth and that you have a heavenly father. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring them to your remembrance, all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the thing that God has had to say to us a lot. Don't, don't be afraid. It's a thing that happens all the time in Scripture. You'll see it over and over again. Oftentimes with very brave men, in, in brave circumstances, they'll still be, have to be told, don't be afraid. And, and I think it has to do with this orphan spirit that's talked about. I will not leave you as orphans, but I'm also going to speak the truth to you. So I'd say the two subjects, the two main subjects that the Holy Spirit teaches is, is this, that Jesus is Lord, and, and there's an element of, of nervousness and fear about that. 
when the Lord shows up, when God shows up mighty, but also that God is, is the Father. So the spirit of truth is going to tell us the truth, but the spirit of adoption is there as, as well. So we're going to start with the spirit of truth and look at that first, and then we're going to talk for a few minutes about the, the spirit of adoption. But first in the spirit of truth, he continues in John chapter 15 when he says this, when the helper comes who I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, there he calls him that again, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world. So scary. Emphasis added by me. <laughs> Why do I do that? Because we think, okay, a helper, oh, a comforter, and we immediately think of like a nice warm blanket. Oh, the Holy Spirit's like this nice warm blanket, and I can just curl up in it, and he's just going to comfort me and help me. And you know what? The Holy Spirit, he does that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he's also the spirit of truth, and the spirit of truth is a convicting spirit to be under. And we're just halfway through the sentence because he says, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So the main teaching under this lordship of Jesus Christ is that God cares about sin. He cares about it deeply. So if, if we imagine this God, if, if he is just good and he, he doesn't care about sin, he, he will let, you know, this humanism where he is, he would never judge, he would never uh, uh, discipline, he will, it will, it will be very uh, like a fiction God. It, where it's, it's this God, uh, oh yeah, he's so good. He doesn't care what we do. And it's, it's, it's most of the, the, the first part where we say, oh, come as you are because God loves you so much. But it, it is, if we don't take the second part where he's like, he loves us so much, but he, he wants us to change. He, he wants to change us. You know, the... the Remember Jesus said the door to come in, it's a very wild door. You can come in, but the, the, the other door to come out, it, it, it's a narrow one. We have to change. And, and if not, it, it becomes this, this uh, humanism. Oh, God came to make us happy. No, and, and, and he would never say no to us. How many of us here, you, you, you already felt God saying no to you? for something. No, my son came to me the other day, say, Dad, let's make a deal. My, my New Year's resolution is I want a week where you can say yes for everything <laughs> I want. I love your son. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, I don't want to even hear you say this again. <laughs> but, but how many of us want this to God and say, God, can you say yes? I, I will not tell you the whole thing, but yeah. say yes, and I will tell you what I want. <laughs> you know? And, and, but it's, it's amazing that this God, he cares. He, he, when he cares for sin, it's because he knows that could destroy us. He, he proves his... He proves his uh, his fierceness in this area. Uh, and, and fierce is a scary thing to, to think about God, but he proves his fierceness in his, his willingness to die to defeat sin. Uh, he, he sacrificed himself on a cross so that we could be Christ-inhabited, Holy Spirit-inhabited people. And so he's going to be really radical about this sin thing. Um, as, a, as a pastor... There's a thing that happens uh, 
pretty commonly when we, you know, if, if Bruce or I or, or Daniel, if we feel like, wow, God really wants to speak about his love for his people this Sunday, or he really wants to, he wants to go deep in, in communicating his, um, his unconditional love to people. Uh, what happens often is, is people will come up afterwards and go, man, that meant so much to me. I've always struggled with, with whether or not God could really even love me. And just the fact that you, know, you communicated that, and, and I saw it in Scripture, I really believe that God, God can love me. And we're just like, yes, that, that's awesome. And then oftentimes someone else will come up and say, you know what, that meant so much to me because I came from a church that really judged me. And, and they're, you know, they say, I can't sleep with my boyfriend, but you, you really showed me that God loves me no matter what I do. And we go, no. <laughs> right? Because there's, there's this, God is, is truth and God is love. And he will not compromise one for the other. He is both. And, and I think sometimes we, we get caught in this. G.I. Pa- Packer said this really well. He's written a lot of great books. Uh, I recommend all of them. He said, would a God who took as much pleasure in evil as he did in good be a good God? Would a God who did not act adversely to evil in his world be morally perfect? Surely not. And so when we talk about God's response to sin, we can't help, we can't dance around this word. We have to talk about the wrath of God. The, the wrath of God is something that maybe used to be preached a whole lot more in the past, and then there was this sort of pendulum swing away from it, and now you see it in, in worship songs, you see it in, in preaching, that people don't want to talk about the wrath of God anymore. They don't want to talk about his anger towards sin or, or his just punishment of sinners. Uh, and and I, I totally understand that. It's not something that's fun to face in our life. Why? Because we are sinners. But what you need to know about the wrath of God is is follow with me for just a second. Wrath is a contingent attribute of God. That means it's not there forever. It hasn't been there since the beginning, and it won't always be there. It's contingent on the presence of sin. When there is sin, God is wrathful. Love is an essential attribute of God. It's always been there, and it will never go away. It's a higher calling to us, the believer, But wrath is also a part of who God is. And that's why we need to talk about this next piece. Uh, The Holy Spirit speaks to us from a spirit of adoption. Yeah, and I believe this is the other side of the coin, if if we kind of use it this way. Because if if you want to let God speak truth to your life, Mm -hmm. we have to let this part be also really into our life that is the spirit of adoption. It's, it's, remember in Hebrew said, he is the father who disciplines the children that he loves. If, if, if you're not a son, you, are, you will not be disciplined. And, and I, I have a sister. We, my, my, my parents, uh, we ha- my aunt had a, he was, was going to have a baby and she told my dad and say, I'm gonna have a baby, I'm gonna drop this baby at the hospital, leave it there and I will come back by my, alone. I don't want the baby. And my parents say, come home and we say to me and my sisters and say, let's, let's adopt this child. And we prayed and we felt God say, yeah. So my dad went, adopted her. Uh, and then she grew up with us. She's, she's my cousin and my sister. It's a very confusing. So I just, <laughs> I just accept her as a sister. So there's two amazing things about that makes me understand when the Bible said God adopt us. The first one, it was, it was a, now where my father had passed away 14 years ago, we have to sell a house. And then all the children has to sign the document releasing my mom to sell the house. It's a Brazil, it's a very confusing. And, and my sister who is adopt, she has a legal right to sign the paper or not sign. If she doesn't want to sell the house, she will say, I, I, I can't. I don't want it. And I can't tell the lawyer and then say, listen, she is adopted. You know, <laughs> we, we, three, we three, it's, it's the, the biological. And she is adopted, so she has no right. But he will say to us, no, she has the same right as you guys. She, she, and the money has to be divided the same way as well. So 
in, in, in another words, this, this idea of being adopted, it, it gives us the, 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 the whole benefit of being called like Paul. Uh, John say he gave us the right to be called children of God, but also because we are children, he has the right also to speak truth and say no to us. Be because love is an eternal attribute of God, it precedes wrath, and actually wrath comes from love. H here's what I mean by that. It's the best explanation I can give. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful mother. I hope when you think about mothers, you think about the things we're supposed to think about, right? When we think about a mom, you should think of someone who's very, very loving and, and very nurturing, who feeds you and takes care of you, and, and, and someone who, who bandages you when you're hurt. That, well, that's the picture of a mom that we're supposed to have in our head when we think of mother. Uh, but you know what else moms can be? Mad. <laughs> right? Have you ever seen Mama Bear? You know, like when something is threatening the cubs, mama bear comes out. And you might have the most meek, mild, loving, nurturing mother in the world, but when something threatens uh, their little baby, they're gonna get strong and they're gonna get fierce. As a matter of fact, there's an organization that's called MAD. It was really big when I was a kid. It was Mothers Against Drunk Driving. You guys heard of it? Mothers Against Drunk Driving is, is huge. It's not just nationwide, it, it's spread around the world. And it came from th this very thing. What happened was back in, in the 70s, the very early 80s, there weren't really laws on the books against drunk driving. You could drive drunk and not get your license taken away. You, you could drive in such a way that people were harmed or killed. I'm sorry, I know this is a painful, some of you in this room might have people that have, have died this way and I'm very sorry. But some, some mothers who'd lost their children sat around a kitchen table just like this one and they said, this has to stop. We've got to change the laws. This is killing our children. They didn't start the organization because they hated drinking or they hated driving. They started the organization because they loved their kids. And because they loved their children, they hated what was killing their children. That's God. God doesn't hate sin just because he hates sin. He hates sin because it destroys us and he loves us. So the ultimate teaching that comes from the spirit of adoption is, sure, in the spirit of truth, God cares about sin. But in the spirit of adoption, God cares about you. And it's because he cares about you that he cares about sin. And unless and until you understand how much he cares about you, you won't understand his caring about sin. And, and, and you'll be afraid to even face it. But after you've been adopted in, like Daniel was just describing, the sister, like, uh, I, I, I bet she knew she was loved, didn't she? Mm -hmm. I, I, I've heard Daniel say that she would tell the other kids, they love me more than you. <laughs> <laughs> and we will complain to our mom and say, hey, you love me more hair. Yeah. <laughs> in my account, you spank me three times more than you spank hair. <laughs> See? So it is, it's true. You, you know why that is? because she believed she was loved by her mother and father. She believed it wholeheartedly. She was a believer. And when we are a believer in, in the fact that the father loves us and he proved it through the sacrifice of his son, he proved it. If you can't believe that, then what can you believe? Brennan Manning is this uh, uh, amazing author who writes a lot about the father heart of God and the love of God. And Brennan isn't actually his given name. It's a name that he took when he went into ministry. And, and he took it from a childhood friend, someone he'd grown up with, that they'd been best friends since elementary school, they'd spent time together, they, they, they joined the military together and they went to war together. And, and while they were literally in a, in a foxhole in a firefight, a grenade came into their foxhole. And his best friend, whose name was Brennan, had just enough time to look at him and smile and then throw himself on the grenade and die instantly. And it was sometime after that that Brennan understood the love of the Father and came to the Lord. And, and many years later, he was at his, his best friend's mother's house. This is, many years had passed. And they were talking about Brennan, the, the original. And, and the author, Manning, said, D 
Did he, do you think he loved me? And the, his mom got up out of the chair and went to where he was sitting on the couch and got in his face and said, what more could he have done? Uh, that's a little uh, in your face. But what more could Jesus do to prove your adoption, mm. to prove his love for you, than the fact that he willingly went to the cross to die for us? Listen, if he can love me that fiercely, if he can love me that deeply, then just maybe I can be brave enough to come into his presence and talk about sin, right? Because, listen, he destroyed our destroyer, and he did it on the cross. So he's not going to be okay with us inviting the destroyer back into our life. He's not going to be okay. No, no, no. I died to stop this, Jason. I died to kill this in you, to set you free from this. Don't go back there. He's going to be fierce about this. Uh, the, the scripture describes it in Romans chapter 8, verse 13 through 17, really, really well. These are, these are some of those verses that make me believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that the word is the inspired word of God. When he says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That can sound like a threat, can't it? It's like, and I think that's why people are so afraid of the wrath of God. Like, well, he'll kill us if we do wrong. But you've got to listen to the whole verse. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, like Daniel was describing, heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Look, there's no way around this phrase, Abba, Father. It is an embarrassing, mushy daddy, right? It's, it's, it's the way we talked when we were little and completely unashamed of loving our parents wholeheartedly. Mommy, daddy, right? You see an adult do that, you're like, eh, maybe stop. <laughs> eh, come on, we're all adults here. But there's something that the Holy Spirit puts inside of us that cries out to our father, daddy. And that's a little bit embarrassing. Do you have a pet name for your husband or wife that you don't say in public? I don't, I'm just <laughs> saying, some people do. Patricia? But this is kind of one of those, those private names that we have for the Father. When, when it's just him and I, I can just go, oh man, Papa, I need you. I need you. I can't defeat this sin. I know you've defeated it, but I'm stuck in it. And he pulls us into his lap and he says, quit trying to do it on yourself. The flesh can't defeat the flesh. This is a spirit job. If you're led by the spirit, you will live. That's our father calling us into his lap. Why? Because he can be that mama bear too. He can be fierce in the things that destroy us. In, in Romans chapter 2 verse 4, it's probably one of the, the, the verse that is also explaining what we are just trying to say. And, and, and it's amazing because Paul is writing this letter for, the, for this group of people who's fighting and division in the church and and some wants to keep some of the sacrifice, another one. And then he, in he, Romans chapter 2, verse 4, they say, don't you see how wonderful, kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? And, I, and, and I, it is amazing. I, I, sometimes we hear people like, I, I'm very scared of the Old Testament in the Bible because it sounds God very harsh. He's very, like, he wants to kill us for anything. And, <laughs> and yeah, I have heard people saying that. That's accurate. And, but when you study, there's the moment where God say, listen, this is what's going to happen. If you turn away from me, you're going to be, I'm going to judge you and I will send you into captivity. 
And then you, when you read the Bible, it's, it's few pages, but actually it's 750 years late where God decided, now it's time. I had enough. I will send you guys to captivity. But if you call my name there, I'll bring you back. You know, 750 years, I don't think here or any place we will find someone so patient like that. I was explaining this to my daughter. She said, wow, dad, can you learn something with God? I was like, yeah. <laughs> 750 years, I don't, I can't. You know? But, but that, that's to put it in perspective. But just coming back to this, my sister, and, and you know that there was one day that something happened, it was when she realized the family that she could grow up, that is my aunt and uncle. And, and then she looked at the family, how they live, how they treat their kids. And then when she looked to my mom, and then she saw how my mom treated her, she hugged my mom and said, thank you so much for adopting me. You saved my life. Today, my sister, she's a missionary with YWAM. She's, 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 she does so well. I'm so proud of her. But you know, there was this moment in her life where she, she realized, yes, I'm adopted, but then she adopted my parents as her own parents as well. And that, that is the moment where I, is where all our struggle of trusting God or, or believing God ends the moment where we adopt him as well. When we, like Paul said, don't you see that is through his kindness that he leads us in, in to be away from sin. It's, it's Paul saying, listen, look at what he has done for you. And then you have a choice to choose between the sin the wrong or between him and who are you going to choose? And Paul say, it, 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 it was his kindness that leads you to choose him. Remember reading the, the blessings and the curse when Moses come? And I picture God, it's like, he, he has two doors. You walk to this door, it's the blessing door. You walk into this door, it's the cursing door. And then God, for me, in my picture, in my mind, I see he's standing at the cursing door, and he's saying, choose the blessing. He's like, <laughs> walking through this door. <laughs> Go this way. He's always doing this, so kind, and say, listen, I have to give you two choice. But my suggestion, choose the blessing. <laughs> you know? It's just by saying. You know, and, 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 it, and it's easy, but it's, it has to come out with this gratitude hair, heart when we say, look at where he took me from, and I have, I accept him as my father. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brock, our, our keyboardist, to come up, because uh, we're going we're gonna to practice hearing God's voice. So what we just talked about was the two, two of the big ways, two of the main ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is, is first to call us to our Father and then to put a spirit in us to, to, to want to move towards Father, to call him Abba Father, to call him Daddy and to move towards him. And, and then when we're brave enough, he's, he's also going to convict us of sin. There's going to be conviction in the process of, of hearing the voice of God at times. And that that is a healing, cleansing, father thing to do. But uh, James Bryan Smith in his book, um, A Good and Beautiful God, says it like this. It's a little bit of a long quote, but follow this with me. He says, we assume that wrath comes before grace, because, but that's not the biblical way. God's first and last word is grace. Until we've been assured that we are loved and forgiven, it's impossible to address our sinfulness correctly. We'll operate out of our own resources, trying to get God to like us by our own efforts to change. God's first word is always grace. Only then can we begin to understand God's holiness and ours. You see what's happening? He, first, 
we have to understand the love of God. And, and that's why the cross is the, the entrance way to all of us. We see the cross, we get some sort of a, maybe you were like me and I was just a kid. And I, I, like, I can honestly say I barely understood the cross. But what I did understand about it was that God loves me a lot, enough to die for me. That I'm the one that deserved to die, but he just kind of, he kind of held me back and said, it's okay, I got this. You couldn't, you can't, you can't do this. So he went up and took my spot. And then unlike what would have happened to me, three days later, he comes back with power. So not only did he take my spot, but he has the power to defeat my, my sin. And all I knew as a little kid was that, I want that. I don't know what it means. I don't know what comes next. I don't know what he'll, he'll ask from me. But if that's what he's offering me, like Daddy was saying, maybe you should check, pick the, the blessed door. I want the blessed door. That's the door I want. And then after we've gone through that door, he's going to father us. He's, he's going to father us. I also have, I have three girls in my house. Our, our beautiful adoptive gift from God, our beautiful biological gift from God, and our, our little foster gift from God. And you know what? Our, our two that are adopted or biological, they're, they're disciplined the same. There's not two rules because they're loved the same. They're loved the same. Listen, you are fully loved. So what we're going to practice here is just saying bravely, you know, if, if we'll put a timer up, we'll put a five minute timer up. We're just going to sit quietly for five minutes. That might sound scary to some of you, but we're just going to sit quietly for five minutes and ask a very simple question of our father. It can sound something like this. Father, what do you think of me? What's your word to me? What do you think of me? That's another, another way of saying, what's my value? What value do you place on me? However you want to phrase that, just for the next five minutes, we're just going to sit here silently. At the end of that five minutes, we'll, we'll give instruction. Yeah, just remember, this is an exercise. If you haven't done this, there's always a starting point. You know, you, you don't go into the gym and pull up 300 pounds in the first time. You start probably with five pounds, and then you adding, and you adding, and you adding. So this is what, are, and we all have the ability to hear God because we all, we all remember the Holy Spirit will be with us and He will be in us. So just coming to this place of grace, you know, if you can be coming towards God with so many things. Imagine your child coming to you, playing in the mud, so dirt. And, and then when he comes, he's still your child. He's, you still love him, but you're probably going to get the rose and clean him a little bit. <laughs> before you you hug him but even the 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 cleaning is an act of love so as you sitting now and, and you wait on god he he remember this he's always this graceful god and he and it's the it's starting of the exercise even if it's just a one word he speaks to you it's there's a starting point you can go ahead and start
worship team to come down. In, uh, so, some of you have made a practice in your life of giving space to hear from God. You've done it through His Word. You've done it through times of, of quiet. Maybe even done it times of fasting. Some of you, this might be a brand new idea. Like, no, no, no. Preacher, you just preach. <laughs> That's how I want to hear you don't want to get quiet before God. I, I just want to encourage you. There's nothing like time with the Father. Sometimes the work he wants to do is deep and takes a lot of bravery. And sometimes he just wants to be with us. I, I've had that experience before where God's just like, I just want to be with you. And those are sweet times. So I just to encourage you, uh, we're going to go to a time of communion now. Um, now that hopefully we've had a chance to hear from the Father, can we just stay in that posture? Just stay open. The Father, as we move to your, your Holy Communion, to the, the thing that's made us brave enough to hear from you, the sacrifice of your own life, of your Son, to, to make life for us, we say, we want to continue to be people who hear and obey your voice. Hear and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. During the length of this song, when you're ready, there's uh, communion elements available in the front and the back. And after you've received yours, we'll, we'll all take together when we all have it.